All right, this is um, pre-calculus, pre chapter 11, the second part of lesson six. I'm on page 750. We're going to finish example two. We'll start with example 2b. So we're plugging in for the eccentricity one. I already know between zero and one, then it's a um, an ellipse. If the eccentricity is one, then we know it's a parabola. I know that this is going to be a parabola. All right. Um, it's said to graph it for for this equation: three e over one plus e cosine theta, because it's the cosine. I know my vertices is going to lie on the x axis, right? I know my vertex, one vertex, because it's a parabola, all right? I know my directrix is going to be here at x equals 3. So, because I'm graphing the parabola, I know that this is my, um, this is, that's where my directrix is, is going to open to the left. All right, we'll plug in 1 for the value of e. It's just going to be 3 over 1 plus cosine theta. Because we're on the x-axis, we're going to plug in 0 degrees, I mean 0 radians, and um, pi radians, and get our two, our points, right? But um, 1, since, we're since it's a parabola, 1, only 1, will make sense, all right? So we'll plug in zero. So it's r equals three over one plus the cosine of zero degrees. And this is gonna be one, right? So the r value is gonna be three over two, which is 1.5, right? Let's just say here, so that one makes sense and it's gonna open that way. We'll show you how pi doesn't make sense because it's r over 3 over 1 plus cosine theta. That's negative 1. It's undefined. So we know it opens in this direction. All right. Now the last one. Still, it's the cosine. So I know that it's going to open left and right. Now my eccentricity is 2. So because my eccentricity is 2, I know I'm going to have a hyperbola. I'm going to have two um, vertices. All right, so eccentricity is 2. So the radius is going to be um, that's 6 over 1 plus 2 cosine theta. Again, I plug in 0 and pi for theta. All right, so when I plug in zero, it's six, one plus two times one, that's six over three, right, which is two. So it's gonna be zero, six over three, which is two. All right, that's gonna be when I go towards my zero, I'm going to have um, a vertex at two. Remember, my directrix is still at 3. So really, I think it's going to open this way and this way. All right, so let's look at what happens with pi. All right, we know at pi, it's negative 1. So it's r equals 6 over 1 minus 2, right? 2 times negative 1. So it's negative 6. All right, so that equals negative 6. All right, so watch this. As I remember, we're going to plot pi negative 6, right? So, as we're looking towards pi, think, think of vectors, right? That's the negative. This is your r value right here, right? I should have done r theta. I wrote that backwards, huh? It should be uh, negative 6 theta. So we go to theta, right? But we're going to go back six. So negative six goes in that direction. So we actually go to positive six. So that's three, four, five, six. So there's six. It's going to open here. 
and it's going to open here. All right, think of the negative force of vectors, okay? All right, example three, identify the conic section. Okay, we're going to find eccentricity. And is that all it's asking us to identify is, oh, find its eccentricity and the vertices. All right, so we're going to find the vertices as well. All right. So the equation is R equals 20 over 4 minus 10 sine of theta. This position has to be a 1. Just like when we were in the rectangular coordinate system, equals 1 is what our equations look like. This one has to equal 1. So I'm going to multiply every term by 1 fourth over 1 fourth. It's literally like I'm dividing every term by 4. All right, so we end up with R equals, what, that's 5 over 1 minus 10 over 4, which is 5 halves sine theta. All right, 5 halves is my eccentricity, so I know it's going to be, it would be a hyperbola. I don't know if they tell you that, but it would be a hyperbola, all right? All right, so then they want the vertices because we're the sine, we're now on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, we're gonna look at pi over two and three pi over two, okay? Those are gonna be our points to find our r values, all right? And that'll be our, That'll be our vertices, and, and we'll have the points. All right, so we know our points are going to be something pi over 2 and something 3 pi over 2. All right, so the sign is negative 1 here. It's positive 1 here. I'm going ahead and put that in my brain, all right? So we have, let's plug in pi over 2. All right, so this is, let's put it in our brains. This is well, I'll write it when I do the sign. R equals 5. I can actually go back here. Let's go back here to 20. Because I don't have a fraction. All right, so it's 20 over 4 minus 10 times the sine of pi over 2. Remember I said that's 1. All right, so that is 20 over 4 minus 10. That's negative 6. So that's, just making sure you can, guys can still see this. That's, okay, both of those are divisible by 2. That's it. So it's negative 10 thirds. So at pi over 2, it's negative 10 thirds. Remember if I was graphing it? The force would be in that direction, so I'd actually graph it down here. All right, so now we'll look at 3 pi over 2. The sine is negative 1. So now we have r equals 20 over 4 minus 10 times the sine of 3 pi over 2. This is negative 1. That's going to make that a positive. So we end up with 20 over 14 both divisible by 2, so 10 over 7. Again, going in this, so both of my vertices are going to be down here, right? If I were plotting this, I'd have one at negative 10 thirds, which is about 3 and a third. There's 3 and a third, right? It would look up. And what did we say this one was? 10, nope, it's going to look down. Because this one is at 10 sevenths, which is like 1 and 3 tenths, whatever, up here. So it would go like this, right? All right, if we were to graph it. All right, example four. Example four is great example because it doesn't give you a whole lot of information, but you can use the information given to solve it. 
And I believe this is the last example. We will work, yep, it's the last example. All right. All right, so it says, find, find a polar equation, the, a polar equation of an ellipse with a focus at zero, zero, and vertices, okay, key point, vertices, three, zero, six, pi. Because it's zero and pi, that's on the x-axis, I know it's gonna be cosine theta, right? So I know I have two options. <laughs> I know that it's either going to be R equals ED over 1 plus E cosine theta, or it's going to be R equals ED over 1 minus E cosine theta. Theta. All right, so I know I have these points. This is my R, that's theta, right? And here's another point, R comma theta. All right, so we'll start with the plus one and we'll plug R and theta in and we'll be left with E, D, and E, all right? So when R is three, we don't know what ED is, but it's one plus E cosine of zero. Um, the cosine at zero is positive one. So we're just left with three equals ED over one plus E. Now multiply both sides by one plus E. To eliminate that denominator, we're left ED equals 3 plus 3e. All right, we're going to leave it there because we're going to end up with the same thing here. And then we're going to substitute for ed and solve for e first. All right, so here my r value is 6 ed over 1. Well, we're, going to go, we're going to do this, this one twice. And then we'd have to go back and do this one, all right? Um, 1 plus e cosine pi. All right, when the cosine of pi is, that's negative 1, right? So we're left with 6 equals e d over 1. Now it's going to be minus e, right? Because e times negative 1. Now we're going to multiply by 1 minus e on both sides. And we're left with 6 minus 6e equals ed. Now we have two equations set to ed. And we're going to set those equal to one another. So you have 3 plus 3e equals 6 minus 6e. I'm going to move the 3 over here and the 6e over there. So I'm left with 3. So that's adding equals 9e divided by nine, E is one third. All right, if we did it the other way, we would come up with a nonsensical answer, right? If you, if you started here and plugged in three, zero, six pi, you would have nonsensical answers, something undefined, probably, all right? All right, so we know our E value is one third. All right, so we can actually come back to either one of these equations and solve for the value of D. All right, so let's go back to this equation and we'll solve for D. So we have three plus three times one third equals one third times D. Well, this is one. So this is four equals one third D. So multiplying both sides by three, D is 12. All right, so I've solved for the eccentricity. I've solved for the directrix. I can now plug it back. I don't need this equation. I'm plugging it into this equation. All right, so we have R equals well, e is one third 
times the directrix 12 over 1 plus 1 third cosine theta. I'm going to erase this. We really don't have fractions typically in any of our equations. So, I actually multiply by 3 over 3 to eliminate, that's like multiplying by 1, um, that uh, denominator. So r equals 12, that just eliminates, that becomes 1, and we multiply that by 3. 3 plus cosine theta. And that would be your final answer. That would be the equation.